and welcome to Ask the Dating Coach. I'm your host, Adam Lyons, and I am joined by my co-host. Hi, I am Eve Lyons. I am the wife of this beautiful Adam Lyons. Excellent. And we have two incredible hosts with us today, guest hosts. Uh, we are joined, obviously, by the wonderful... Lloyd Dixon uh, from The Single Guy, partners with Adam Lyons, and happy to be here. And lastly, the very special guest, the original pickup artist, one of the first dating coaches ever to exist in America, Mr. Vince Kelvin. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Dude, it's such an honor to have you here today, bro. Like, it's so cool. So for those of you guys that don't know, we could argue that the grandfather of pickup artistry, dating, seduction, um, or, or the original system was speed seduction. And you were one of the first people that did speed seduction, like back in the day, right? Back in the days, yeah. Yeah. Yep. When was this roughly, like in terms of decades? Mm. I think that was even before the, the millennium. We, we're talking 97, 98. Wow, you're that yeah. old? Wow. Damn. That old, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> well, you look great, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Show me your skin routine. So <laughs> what I love about Vince, and I've, like, I, I've been saying this for ages, there's a lot of people on the internet arguing like, Who's good at dating? Like, who's the best dating coach? Who's great? And nowadays, like, you know, 2023, everyone's saying it's about social status, money, good looks. You know, Vince knows we've been through this cycle, right? That was the early 2000s. Yeah. Early 2000s. It was about money, good looks, oh, social status. Oh, interesting. Full circle, huh? Yeah, previous to that, everyone knew it was more about how you say things, the way you come across. When we go into past uh, 2003, 2004, 2007, People knew it wasn't about money, status, good looks. It was about how you say things. So we go in these cycles. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the new cycle of everyone believes it's all about this. What I love about you, Vince, and I, I, there is no insult here, but you are not the stereotypical, you know, beach boy, you know, muscular, ab wearing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Yeah, you, you're not. You don't have that look. You know, and, and then other people will say it's about age, you know, and you are definitely over like 28, right? Like you're, you're older than that. <laughs> and so you stand against everything that everyone believes yeah. is what's needed now. That, that's kind of been my thing throughout the years, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. as a shorter man, I dated women who were super, super tall. Uh, you know, I wanted to defy the odds and... Uh, uh, undo all false notions and stereotypes. Yeah, which I love. And, and for those of you guys that don't know, like I have literally witnessed mis this man, and you can too. You can go on YouTube. You can watch him. He makes out with women 20 years younger than you that are gorgeous that you meet on the street within how long of meeting them? It happens super fast. It can happen super fast. A and it's just incredible because... I don't care what you think in life. You just have to watch this guy in like, and how many videos do you have of you doing makeouts? Like, honestly. Makeouts, you know, I, I count about 5,000. Whoa! Yep. 5,000 5, yeah. videos? 5,000 uh, Documented, I'm still counting. We're still digging new ones all the time. I, I don't think that it's 5,000, but it's, it's so significant, it's ridiculous. Is it over yeah, 10? I feel, yeah, I, I, I feel like, Embarrassed sometimes. I, I no, amuse myself cool. to look back, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All those makeouts and the quantity of saliva exchange. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy. Moisty. You can start a new calling. Can you make sure you speak a bit closer to the mic, please? So that's oh, yeah, we'll get you yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Ah, gonna, perfect. Yeah. See, despite yeah. all the kissing, I'm too far from the mic. Exactly. Can yeah. you describe again Kiss what the those mic. kisses <laughs> contained? The. Wow, I'm going to describe it differently <laughs> other than the sal saliva. My favorite part of kissing is the anticipation. It's when you still don't know if it's going to happen or not. And sometimes it's even greater than a kiss. Non-kissing or, or like, <laughs> no, is, will it happen or not? I always said seduction, real seduction, the essence of it is very feminine. And it's a pending option. Will it be? It might not be. That's the best part of it. Once it is, once it has been, you know, I mean. You heard it here. It's Schrodinger's makeout from Vince Kelvin. Right. That's 100% <laughs> what this is. Um, we, we are going to have a very interesting topic today, guys. And for everybody who is watching at home, this is huge. The topic is Jada Smith, which is Will Smith's wife, supposedly. That's all she's famous for. Well, no, she was an actress in her own right, obviously. She was also an actress. But, but for this specific subject, we know this is important. She just came out and said... 
that as far as she's concerned, her and her husband, Will Smith, have been separated for six years. Was that during the entanglement thing that she was talking about? It, well, apparently so, but this is where this gets interesting. That means when he said to Chris Rock, get my wife's name out your damn mouth, and then he hit Chris at yeah. the Oscars, which caused him to retroactively lose his Academy Award and be banned from the Academy, he was defending his wife as far as he was concerned. But she didn't perceive them being married during that moment. Yeah, so it sounds like he was trying to like win her back or something, or he maybe felt like they weren't together, so he was trying to overcompensate, right? Now, f f if you do you remember the exact scenario of what happened, like play by play? Because I I watched it and I've analyzed it over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did a breakdown, I think, on my uh, Instagram, but I think you did one too. That yeah, was a, that was a bit better. Yeah. So for me, here he was the steps. Chris made a joke about her her condition, uh, which causes her to to lose hair. Yeah, like alopecia. Yeah. Right, and Will laughed. Then Will looks at her. She gives him a look like this isn't funny. Will reacts visibly getting angry and then starts getting aggressive with Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. So initially, Will's initial reaction was not to defend her. His reaction to her facial expression was I'm going to step in and do something because I'm being made to feel that I'm doing something, something wrong. Right. So the, the question here is, how do we feel about the fact that this woman is now saying, oh, yeah, we weren't even together then? Mm. I mean, she could be lying, too. You know, like if someone says that they're like, maybe she's just justifying her behavior uh, after the fact. Like maybe she didn't act very good. And now she's just saying that they're separated because like, hey, well, you know, if I was doing all of this other stuff, then it's OK. But I know they've openly admitted that they've been in an open thing for pretty much since they've been married, I think. So I don't know why she feels the need to say that they're separated if that was also the case. I don't know. I, I've, I've got a theory on why she feels the need to say it, which I'm, I'm going to say in a minute. But I want to see, what do you guys think about this? I think she's grabbing for attention. I think, you know, job is slow, right? There is not much acting. I haven't seen anything from her, basically, right? So it's like, hey, bad PR is still PR, right? So, you know, in, in my opinion, right? Because, again, if, even if that's true, right, who cares? Seven years, six years? Why drag it through the press? Especially it's been happening for so many years, basically, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Vince, mm. what do you think? Well, you know, we're all very adorable because <laughs> we're still not that far from uh, having been little kids. So I think this, uh, an element that's probably very childish, like I got hurt and now I want to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. That's typical, right? Yeah. Uh, that's typical. I mean, speaking to you as somebody who's married five times, uh, <laughs> they <laughs> tend to... Uh, <laughs> I do the same sometimes. Like <laughs> we, we feel hurt and we go like, I hate you in any way you mean. So we were not even together. So I, I may be off with that, but I perceive it as a, a very like <laughs> non-mature response. A, a cry, right. for, you, a cry you, for you, attention? You, yeah. Maybe. Okay. You're definitely the most qualified person to talk about it. So many marriages under your belt, you know? So, so many marriages, plenty of children, you know, plenty so of yeah, make out. <laughs> I love that. He never said he got divorced. <laughs> just, just keep into the fact. I mean, true, true. God, no. Yeah. Um, so he, here's my belief. I believe I, I actually agree with you. I think she's not really doing much in the media in terms of like her career, but anytime she talks about their relationship in a controversial way, she gets in the media. She mm. gets in the news. Like we just saw a moment. Like if you ever follow Logan Paul, I think Logan Paul is amazing from his marketing skills, which I'm really impressed with. He will often do a publicity stunt and then afterwards explain how it was pre-scripted, how he planned it out, um, and he knows he gets eyeballs. So he's about to go into a, a, a new fight against a bare-knuckle boxer. And during the interview, this also happened today, uh, or in the last 24 hours, he threw his water bottle at the guy's stomach. Mm -hmm. The guy reacted by throwing his microphone at Logan Paul's head, cutting him open, blood going everywhere. And uh, Logan Paul, the question is like, is he going to fight now? And he says he's still going to fight. But the point is, that did exactly what Logan Paul wanted it to do. Everyone is now talking about, will he fight, won't he fight? Mm. Which means there will be more eyeballs on the fight. Like, I didn't know about the fight until he did that publicity stunt. So Logan Paul is the king of publicity stunts as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I think Jada Smith has learned that she can make herself very relevant in the media right. by basically destroying Will Smith's <laughs> reputation. <laughs> and I think that's really what's going on. I think she's preying on his career 
and destroying his reputation to keep herself relevant because she had a career as an actress. She was trying to make herself relevant. Yeah. But you don't hear anything about her career, but you do hear about her right. putting Will Smith through hell. How does she make money off that, though? Well, okay, so there's, there's a lot of different components here. First of all, I never said she made money from it. Okay. It's just it keeps attention. her relevant. Okay. But right. also, and I know this, every time we appear in the media, you get phone calls. Producers yeah. call you up, hey, do you want a TV show? Every single time. Like, every time we have ever ended up in the news, within 24 hours, the phone starts ringing. TV people, hey, we want to interview you. Hey, we want to do this. Hey, we want to do that. Mm -hmm. And that leads to potential TV deals. If you've worked in the film industry and no one's calling, which is one of the worst things, you're, you're irrelevant, no one phones you, you do some kind of publicity stunt, you get yourself in the news, the phone starts ringing again. Right, right. Interesting. So you think she's doing it for attention purposes and she's uh, hoping a deal will come out of it? I, I am 100% convinced. Like, why else would you air your dirty laundry publicly? Like, who, who needs to know that they were separated for six years? Like, why is that, why is that relevant in or seven years? Why is that relevant in any way? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I, I it personally... It ruined my day, personally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 I'm still recovering. <laughs> you know who's still recovering? Their kids, probably. Yeah. Uh, Can you yeah. Imagine being your kids in that thing. Oh man. Jeez. Yeah, that's a bit unclassy too. So I'm not sure why. You know, again, like I wouldn't personally, right? So, just some people get addicted to attention, I guess, right? They they miss it. So. Well, and, and now let's talk about this, like in in another way, because if a celebrity is capable of doing this, someone who's got millions, has a career, has a happy marriage, potentially has children. What does that say for the average guy who's dating a woman that wants to be oh. known and she wants to make it, but she has nothing interesting going on in her life? Now, this isn't fueled by a career, but this absolutely could be something where she triggers drama on a regular basis in order to create an excitement, to create energy, right? Imagine this. You got a couple every day. They go to work. They come home. They cook food. It's 7 p.m. They put the TV on. They sit down in front of the TV. Then they go to bed. They maybe have sex, maybe don't. They wake up the next day. They do the same thing again. You've got that monotony. Yeah. She thinks back to the best relationship she ever had, one of her first relationships where they didn't know how to be healthy. They didn't know how to communicate and they would argue and, and she would cause right. drama and she's like, this relationship sucks, the one I'm in, but I don't want to break up with the guy, but I do want excitement. Mm -hmm. He's not triggering excitement. I'm going to annoy him and I'm going <laughs> to make him, I'm going to entertain us <laughs> by annoying this guy. Right, so I'm relevant. So I've got something to talk to my friends about. Imagine right. phoning up your friend Jenny, right? And you're like, hey, Jenny. And she's like, how's everything? And you're like, everything's great. What did you yesterday? We watched that new TV show. Fabulous. Boring. Shout out to you tomorrow, right? As opposed to, you know, hey, Jenny, how are you doing? Oh, my God, I'm okay. And you, you won't believe what happened to me. What? Well, my husband yesterday didn't pick up the trash. And you're like, oh, the fiend, right? And now, now there's topic. Oh, yeah. Now you've got something to talk about, right? So she's got a reason to communicate and to, to have drama so she can have someone feel sympathy. I told you to get rid of that rat. You, you see what I mean? And it's, it's crazy how boredom drives drama. Now, right. and we've known this since the Roman times. Like, I'm always thinking about the Roman Empire. You guys? Uh, 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 probably every day. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's a, do you think about the Roman Empire very often? Quite often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very common. <laughs> and um, so, but <laughs> what I find fasc fascinating about the Roman Empire is they knew that Rome was so safe that people were causing drama, so they created the Colosseum and the gladiatorial games mm. to entertain people because they didn't have TV. Otherwise, right. they would have just watched uh, TV. Losers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So have any of you guys had experience of that kind of drama with somebody, and how have you dealt with it? Craving for drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a constant. With the women you date or women in general? Um, I, m including myself. Like, People, women, I, th I think we all crave drama. And, I agree. And the, the opposite of that is like n really not easy. For me, the toughest thing to do is to just sit still with whatever is. Makes sense. Right? Yeah, I have trouble with that too. You know, I'm, I'm probably the more dramatic one of the two. But like, no, I, I, I think women, I find that the female needs to be seen and heard. You know, and so, and if they don't, then they'll start doing crazy things to like be seen and heard. So I think every woman has that within them. Every person has that within them a little because every guy and every man and woman has masculine and feminine within them. Uh, but like, 
there are certain women who crave it more and they crave it a lot and definitely psychotics as you, you talked about in your personality tests um they tend to crave it a lot more and if they don't get it they will do whatever it takes to get it and yeah. they're sometimes very effective at it so like you know strippers um you know all kinds of different people that crave high stimulation i think they they want that yeah it, and just to be clear, psychotics, I define, it, it's a psychological term. It's people that make emotional decisions versus logical decisions. I don't mean psychopaths. Is a <laughs> big, big oh, yeah, we should define that. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. But yeah, we, we're using shorthand jargon because we know what we're talking about. Yeah, um, yeah what, do you, what do you think? Um, I'm thinking that, again, I actually know a lot of men who seek that too, you know? Even yeah. mutual, mutual friends of ours that would come over and be like, I won't believe what just happened. I'm like, oh, my God. I know, you know, like <laughs> I know the guy. I know who you're well thinking like, of. Yeah, that this one one guy that you know was there today. Over, yeah, he was there today. Always <laughs> likes to be like, let me tell you what some other people tell me. Like, I don't need to know. You know, like I specifically say, I'm like, no, let just work. You know, but no, no. You know, I just sometimes it comes my way. You know. Uh, this is the funny thing. I love having no drama. I'm like happiest with no drama. Mm. I want to zero drama. I want to just be hanging out and do fun nerdy things and like not have drama. I think you. Uh, I don't know. I think you like solving problems. I, I do. agree. Yes. I like solving problems, but I would rather solve non-drama problems. How can you have a non-drama problem? Because then there's no urgency. Uh, growth. So there's the, the carrot and the stick. You're either chasing growth or you're running from pain. I hate running from pain. I grew up running from pain. Yeah. Everything was terrible. Everything was bad. And it was just like solve the problem, solve the problem, solve the problem. I would much rather rearrange my life that I'm constantly growing and I'm so far ahead of the pain that I'm chasing growth, chasing growth, chasing growth. And actually, I will not relax. I will focus on chasing growth so I never relax and never end up getting the, the pain catching up to me. I, okay. I would rather move ahead. Wow. <clears throat> but, you're still, but you're still running from uh, a pain, but it's like, it's buried deep down. It's, it's so, I, I don't think it was buried. I think it was so far behind me okay. because I'm so busy running. Right? Okay. That I'm trying to continually reach the next peak Right. To stay away from that which will come if I turn around and start looking at the problem. Instead of being vague, let me be really specific. If I'm in a relationship with somebody and I can feel that um, we are getting into a monotony, yeah. I'm going to create not a problem, but a new goal. A new goal that is such a big reach that we will have to put a lot of time, energy, and effort to reach it so that all of that energy is there. But it isn't, we wait until it's so bad that now we have to solve the drama problem. And that's like, that's my preference. So, right. it, you know, if I notice like, oh my God, monotony, 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 I'm like, okay, now let's do this, this thing that is really, really different and wild. Sure. Okay, so that makes sense. Because uh, I thought that like, you know, I guess maybe it's a limiting belief, but like sometimes I feel like there has to be issues and problems and drama is a good source of that. So you have something to do. Um, and so people who love solving problems, I always felt like they love, love the drama aspect so they could have a problem to solve. But yeah, yours no, is uh, more about growth. Yeah, I would, I would rather. So I'll, I'll give you some like real examples. Right. So like um, you know, obviously we're nerds, but like in our life. Uh, one of the things that I would do, like with Eve, is uh, we just started um, taking part in these live action role playing fights. And oh I'm boy, there's so much drama there. Right, exactly. <laughs> but like that drama is not actually impacting us, right? So we're, it's a fictional world where we're meeting up and sword fighting. But you know, it means that we have to sword fight twice a week to stay healthy enough that when we go there, we can fight. So we've now we can't sit down. It's like hey, we're going to sword fight. Um, when uh, I saw Eve the other day practicing her bow and arrow, she was outside, you know, <laughs> shooting her bow. So I had my kids sneak up on her and attack her. That's drama, but it's simulated drama where there's no actual issue. Right, no real and consequences. Yeah, and so I'm constantly thinking, what fake drama can I cause that is actually fun so that there is constantly a new thing to do? Um, a, a good example is like um, photography. Um, I recently got into action figure photography. Again, I've never done it before. I was like, this would be a stupid thing to do. Let's do it. And then when I did it, um, I bought all the stuff for it. You know, it literally cost like 300 bucks because action figures. And um, I set it all up on the living room floor in front of her while she was reading a book. And I'm just like taking pictures, knowing that she's a professional photographer. It took like 20 minutes before I, she told me what I was doing wrong. Uh, 30 minutes later, <laughs> she's now in there with me, helping me take pictures. Step and aside. That's yeah, not exactly, right? That's not how you do it. Yeah, no. I'm like, no, I got this. I'm pretty sure if I turn all the lights off, it looks better. It's like, no, you idiot. Like, you know, but that's the point. I would rather do that than sit next to her reading a book, 
fast forward six weeks, and she says, all we do is sit on the sofa and read books. Mm. That's brilliant. You know, that really validates, this is interesting. Okay. Because not too long ago, I was in the middle of a coaching session, and the person's request that day was, I want to be more like, let's say somebody like Adam Lyons. And okay. Go, well, you know, Ooh. I just happened to know Adam Lyons, and... <laughs> They really, they really said that? Genuinely, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Genuinely, I, I thought, okay. What a, what a coincidence. What, what would be a characteristic of Adam that would assist this gentleman? I said, you know, Adam is very forward in his thinking. It's very growth oriented. I don't ever recall you not stating something forward, a solution. You are a, a beautiful, extreme example of uh, uh, solution oriented thinking. Thank you. Go forward. And that's what I suggested to the person. Nice. Thanks. Now, I, I love, it brings up the interesting element of uh, uh, first, how could a, a person gauge the level of drama of the other person? That, that, would be, that would be essential. And I know it's not easy. I often hear people say, how do you know if a person is overly dramatic or not? And here, like a side note for me, I find, you know, you mentioned age before. I'm 55 years old heading to 56, so it's an interesting age. It's like <laughs> the age of transcendence, where, oh. where everything that I valued, that I, I, I sought so strongly, is now going to, to lead to like, okay, well, there's gotta be more to it than all of that. And I was really moved by the thinking of Carl Jung. Yep, that yeah, we yeah. all, without knowing it, caught in a debate. And every day, all the clients that I help, they caught in a debate. Should I text her again? Should I not? Should I stay with her? Should I not? Should I go with multiple? Should I just, should this or that? So two things, and your own personal debates. I mean, it's, it's fascinating yes. if we have an interesting debate like now, that's one thing. Yeah. If uh, we, let's say, you know, oh man, this is an interesting area. Should I relocate? Should I not? Well, let's think about it. But that constant, like, should I this, should I that, if we don't pay attention to it, it's subtle. Yeah, and it's I wasted think energy. that's part of the trigger that, that yeah. creates that we want out of it. I don't want that debate anymore. And every day, and if I resolve an aspect of the debate, there's going to be another one. So a higher solution is forward thinking like you guys. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And then personally, at a pickup standpoint, you know, let's see, you having a little interaction to channel the drama instead of having the debate on the inside. Should I text her? Should I not? Text her a debate. I'm a champion of that. I will present those little debates, okay? Like a question, you know? Like, oh my God, I'm going to Austin, Texas. Do I stay two nights or three nights? Help! And they're on it right away. As a woman, okay, most women would agree. They're on it. So you gotta channel the drama. And I'm inspired. Like, I feel it. Your yeah. presence is that. <laughs> Look, Dude, I, I love I'm this. Taking on the world. You're, 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 you're <laughs> saying give the woman you're dating, like, Options? Is that what you were saying? So, what do you? I, I go, go fast. fast. I think I'm like, he's, <laughs> he's, and indecisiveness. And I always tell our coaching clients too on the phone, be like, hey, well, you know, like, you want to proceed signing up? We're like, oh, no, let me think about it for a week. I'm like, what are you going to think about for a week? Oh my God. I need to look at my finance. Like, for a week? You know, like, oh yeah. my, all you're doing is robbing time from yourself, right? It's either right. a yes or a no, but decide, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a no, that you can be a no and go do something else. If it's a yes, let's go, right? But I'm going to think about it for a week or a month. So like, oh, I always, I let them like 24 hours. Tomorrow you let me know. Otherwise, forget my number. You yeah, know, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I, I love this. this is so, and this is why I, I freaking love you, Vince, by the way. Like, if, for all, everyone who's, like, never heard of Vince Calvin, by the way, like, first of all, you're robbing yourself of looking at the guys that have paved the way for all the new people to come. <laughs> but, like, there is so much wisdom in what he said, right? So much. Like, there are a lot of guys that, like, you know, you know, don't be a fucking pussy. Like, just fucking make a decision, right? There are those kind of guys, like, or just fucking pick, right? Or just do the action. No, there, there's so much more power in, first of all, understanding... Debates are great, personal debates are terrible, right? Yeah. Which, is, which is the first thing that Vince said, which I agree with 100%. I'm exactly the same. Any minute I am having an internal discussion, and I'd never even voiced it until you said it, by the way, so that, that's fabulous. That needs to end straight away, and I, I do. How do you end it, though? Um, so we'll get there. He gave a solution. One is make the debate an opportunity to talk to another woman. 
send the debate to her and let her deal it's with it. It's her problem now, right? Yeah. She doesn't decide whether he's staying two, two nights or three nights. You yeah. know, it's up to her. I love that. It, right? It's kind of like the idea of like the guy that, that tossed a coin to make decisions or rolled a dice to make decisions, right? Yeah. Or always just said yes. Like in his situation, he's saying always just ask another woman. What a great opportunity to continue a conversation. Go on a dating app and just send it to, hey, I'm flying to Austin tomorrow. I don't know if I'm saying two or three nights. Can you pick for me? <laughs> right? Like, and you send that to 200 women. Imagine like, hey, what's up? Happy Wednesday. Oh, that's I'm flying to Austin. Response. Yeah, we, right? we, do I stay for two nights or three? Like, what? <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, I would actually, I would respond there too, like thinking about it, right? right. But I, I still I don't know if I should stay two or three nights. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you gotta write, write down all the answers, compare who's who, you know, who's won, you know, which one's two, which one's You know, one of the, like, most misunderstood steps I took was a program called God-Given Game. <laughs> God-Given Game. And right there, it, it would be easy, and I love that I can easily be misread. It's a little bit like of the final frontier. But I'm all about core healing for both men and women. And in that program, what I wanted to utter that was totally misunderstood, uh, God-given game would be, it's already there. If, if, let's say, I don't know what to say, that's what I should say. I don't know what to say, <laughs> but you grab my attention. Then I realize that I'm not really comfortable, and forgive me, but I'm not really comfortable. <laughs> and then you get clever. Do you know Sorry, I my saliva. You're good. No, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's, uh, it's okay. I let it be. Okay. Already, so yeah. good. All right, so. <laughs> 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 but, uh, so let's say, then you get clever, okay? Yeah. And you go, do you know you have that effect on people? Do you know you're making me shy? But to keep it, like, m many people misunderstood the idea of natural game as, oh, this person is so given and it's natural for them. I think natural would be keep it real. Whatever you're experiencing, yeah. whoever you are at the time, don't think that it's working against you. Make it work for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you. You're, you're mm. channeling your inner core. You're connecting with your inner thoughts, and there's no sort of edits. or It's just coming out. It's pure you. It's like... The, I, f I think we call it the flow state or something where there's no yep. thinking, there's only doing. And that's the highest level of game that you can get to. And like, you know, we always talk about, I think most of what, when I was looking at real social dynamics, if I remember back in the day, like 99% of what they would talk about would be to try and get to that point that you were saying. Hmm. They would try and they would have all these weird mental mindset techniques that you could go through to get there. Uh, but the or essence of it is what you're describing. Just be yeah. Vince Kelvin. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just be Vince Kelvin. So, yeah. uh, this, is, so it, this is getting too sophisticated for me. I'm so sorry. I'm going to... Uh, I actually, considering starting a new addition to all of our podcasts at the end, be like, yeah. explain to me like I'm five. You know, it's going to be great. <laughs> Anyhow, I have a question for Vince. Oh, please. How did the um, quality of makeup and saliva transcended during the years from 97 up until present day? And what did you do during COVID? Were you able to make out? Ah, that was, that was the big challenge. I, yeah. that, that's when I, Tell me more I used it in reverse. Ooh. Oh my God. You know, whatever you learn is with you for a lifetime. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned, you, uh, not the, kiss them during you know, the, the, the Logan Paul. Yeah. yeah. Um, I live that 1600 vibe. That, that's where the, the, all those things happened initially. And it's a very busy area of Hollywood. It's so and during sunset, COVID, right? I use all my awareness of body language and so on to avoid people. I use my ability to dress up to really like down dress. Well, you you should have went got opposite. your hair sort of up, out, so people will keep away. You out, know what I mean? like keep away, be kind of hide <laughs> it. Okay? And uh, the big question right now, I've had more makeouts more recently by asking people, do you think that kissing is a thing of the past? That would be pretty sad, wouldn't it, to miss out on this unique moment where, you know, finally your lips are coming closer to mine. And then this you is speed seduction, guys. And I will pass on it. I will pass on it. Currently, it's I'm so passing good. on it. You, it would have to be very special. I mean, I challenge any woman out there to go, hey, you, you're known as, as the kissing scent. You're the guy with the 5,000 makeouts. I'm going to kiss you now. No, no, no. Keep your distance. I did not Robust get fully come this out of this, uh, this thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
<laughs> You'd be like, I don't think you're worthy of making it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put down five thousand people. That's my next goal. I've done it, but how many, how many more can I kiss after a while? It's, it's, it's just confusing. It's just like and I'm just imagining he like <laughs> meets a woman on the street and he's like, yeah, listen, normally, like if we'd have met four years ago, I'd have made out with you, but after oh, COVID. Yeah. This can't happen anymore. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry I just met you, but this has to end. You know, we can't, we can't make out. No matter how much you want, no matter how much you th feel our lips coming together, put that from your mind. Don't think about it. <laughs> there is nothing on this planet that's going to make me kiss you. No matter how special yeah. and magical this moment may yeah. be, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. This is but like you know classic Though, game, you know guys. To reach the place where it would be wonderful if it happened or it would be wonderful if it doesn't happen. And I would say that's a journey. But when you reach that place, because... No, right now it'd be wonderful. Like uh, sometimes sex becomes a task. Sometimes you know you have other things to do. So, like, I, so I'm hard to be place. guys. I gotta, yeah. I gotta break this down, guys. If you're not hearing the amazing game, can you imagine saying? Just think this through, right? Like. Imagine if we could reach a place where it would be wonderful that we didn't kiss and wonderful if we did. Wouldn't you want that? Right? And they go, yeah, I would. Right? Just think through because you're agreeing to both statements. You're agreeing to saying it's wonderful if we don't kiss and it's wonderful if we do. Vince, everything you yeah, say is yeah. such a good if game. For the rest of my life, I was by myself celibate. What an achievement. I'm kind of looking forward to it. <laughs> and if, you know, like if. Or if I'm like, this is it. Finally, my sixth wife was the one. <laughs> we stayed together. <laughs> I don't know. This is just fascinating. I just love you, dude. <laughs> you got you to keep it at that place. And it's true. It's genuine. There used to be a time when I would be like, I so want to kiss her. Hey, maybe, you know, we should wait. <gasps> like the classic takeaway. Now it's just like, probably not. Yeah, but the, <laughs> unless you were really special. Unless you're the one. And I yeah, but even then, even then, you know, the time could be invested meditating, painting. Yeah, you tell her that it's only special person who can break the celibacy. You know? Yeah, but in it's the like meantime, let's hang out and meditate and paint. Like, <laughs> guys, this is so good. Like, and, and the best part about, like, Vince's game, by the way, like, everyone listens to it. It is genuine. Like, this isn't an act. Like, it's not like Vince leaves here and then, like, you know, puts his suit back on, right? And, like, <laughs> takes the hair no, off. Yeah, no, exactly. Takes the, off the uh, wig. What do you call it? The Mick Jagger syndrome. Right, yeah. You, you've heard of the Mick Jagger Syndrome, right? No, go for uh, it. No, that's uh, apparently when they were down off stage, everybody would get uh, 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 out of character. He did not. Oh yeah. He did that. He was just McJagger. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah, and that's why I like Vince is Vince, and, and like truly, like whatever, like there is a a tendency to see somebody like Vince or even Vince himself and to make assumptions, right? To be like, oh, you know, that guy. There's no way it's real. There are YouTube videos that prove it is. You mm -hmm. know, there are people that are going to look at it and be like, I could never do that, and and but. But Vince does, right? Vince isn't tall. Vince doesn't have all those advantages. He just has great game in an amazing way with words. That is the power. And even if you believe in, you know, making money, looking good, driving, good for you. I'm the same. I'm, I'm with you on that, right? Like, I love making money. I love, yeah, you know, working out. Or. Yeah, it's not either or. But dear Lord, add this element. Like, <laughs> grab some of that and add it because... When a woman is stuck between two guys who both work out and both are successful and both uh, have a higher social status, she's going to pick the one that knows how to talk in a way that gets her to open up her mind to the possibility mm -hmm. of what would happen if they interacted with this person. That's the power of words. It's beautiful. Like, you guys, this is a masterclass in communication you're getting here, and I hope you appreciate it. She will also gravitate towards the person that uh, will be okay if she doesn't want it. At yeah. the core. Yeah. At the core. Yeah. That's often be misunderstood. But like, I work all the time on if I hear you, 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 you I don't like you. Please, I want more people not to like me because I, how can I like myself until I'm okay if I'm not being liked? Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. I have more questions, though, Vince. Please, yeah. Please. Roll. Have you ever kissed a man? Have I ever kissed a man? Well, you know, out of 5,000. I'm uh, sure there's some sneak in, you know? Somewhere, somehow. Somebody tried to trick me once, and I, I saw it last minute. I don't think so, no. No? Okay. All right, so in that case... I mean, I, 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 I have been tempted to come close to myself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so you can zoom in like, oh, Vince. <laughs> Statistically, with the way hey, surgeries are going these days, you know, what you might have happened, you wouldn't know. Anyhow, all right. Next question. Speaking, <laughs> what would be a 
What was um? What was your <laughs> best gift if you remember? <laughs> oh, top, it's the top one ten, that is like yet to come. Oh, okay. it's the <laughs> one that's yet to come. The be- I, l- I love the n- the non kiss kiss. You know. Okay, non kiss kiss was the best. The non kiss kiss. That's Next when you get really close. Uh, here's my favorite way to kiss. Okay. Okay. There's the element of trust always is essential. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> tell the person, I want you to know that you can trust me completely. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna bring your lips really close to mine, but that cl- well, maybe a, l- a, l- a little more. Okay. And now I know what you're gonna think. You're gonna think I'm gonna kiss you, and I'm not gonna do it. And I want you to ride those little waves so you know that you can also trust yourself that in the worst case, you're fine. Yeah, so boosting the other person's confidence as well. And then you do it three times. And on the, and after, I told you I wasn't gonna kiss you, I didn't kiss you. And the proximity is very arousing. Proximity is very arousing. And in that moment, that's when uh, I would go, and now that you know you can trust me, you better trust me that when I tell you I'm gonna kiss you, I'm gonna kiss you, and that's when you kiss. <laughs> no, that one didn't do it. <laughs> no, uh, <sorry>. that's great. <laughs> it's, but I'm it's good. Adam was about okay. to make out with you, I think it was, I think it was <laughs> good. A lot of it is awareness, right? I understand. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, more no, aware of it sure. now. I'm, I'm no, like it's all like pre-built. Lips yes. aware. Yeah, it's great. In, in, in an environment where you're sitting here like, and you're, you're going through one, two, three quickly, the third one sounds uncalibrated. But it isn't when you're in the moment because yeah, you're reading yeah, the person. If the person is willingly moving in and be like, oh, yeah, you're right, and then you say it, you know you're going to get it. But he's only going to say it when he knows it's going to happen. I, I didn't think it sounded too uncalibrated. I thought yeah, it sounded uh, yeah really I good. feel like Lloyd very kissed him. I'm way too far. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's like why I did this on purpose, the closer, distance there, you know? of the table. Like, oh, buddy. <laughs> All right, what was the worst kiss then? Or one of the worst, like, if you can remember them? Um... They were a few last minute, like, watch out, what's that on the lips? No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> little herpes sore, you're like, whoa, didn't see that one. But no, a little voice would always internally guide me. Uh, there was an interesting moment where this girl was, like, touching me and everything, but somehow she wouldn't kiss. And suddenly, I walk inside uh, the ba- uh, bathroom, and I see her, like, acting like she was getting caught with my mouthwash. So she had been breath conscious all night long. That makes sense. Yep. And I was taking it personally. Mm. I thought it was me. I didn't know. I actually, I I had and she finally stole my mouthwash to be ready to kiss me. I had this situation with a, a Latvian woman. It's the only Latvian woman I've ever been with. And for now, in my head, all Latvian women are like oh just like her. Oh, ruined it. That's a whole yeah, country. And, um, and so she was beautiful. We were like making out. We get back to my place. We're in bed. And she would not take off her underwear. Like everything, like she was making out, she was sucking me, um, she had me in a mouth. Like, everything was great, but she I would am not a bad take influence. I am a bad influence. <laughs> I hear you now. Right, I yeah, am some, a bad influence. something's wrong. Yeah, and so, um, but anyway, eventually I'm like touching her over her underwear and she's okay with it. She's getting more and more turned on. Eventually, no, definitely not. That's and eventually, um, I go to take her underwear off. Uh, and, you know, she's like not officially said yes but hasn't said no either and she's like moving towards taking it off herself but it isn't there and I go to take it off and I stop and I'm like hey I'm not going to take this off unless you say you're okay with it that's not going to happen and she says look I'm okay with it but I haven't shaved Mm. and I'm like that's the reason she goes that's the reason I'm like I like hair and she goes oh thank god and she just like (laughs) threw it off right like so so in her head She's holding back because she hasn't shaved. She's worried I'm going to reject her. In my head, she's holding back because she doesn't know if she wants to have sex. The reality is she had pubic hair and was worried about it. I found that also to be the case sometimes in long-term relationships where there's a total misunderstanding. Like every time that I have a little difference with my girlfriend, later on when we talk, I realize that it was a completely different reason than what I imagined. And and now I know I still got to work. But all that talk is funny for me. I, I, I foresee the transcendence. I think we got to go through the sex thing and so on to transcend it. I, w- I was really moved this last uh, uh, past couple of months. You know, I went to visit my father. My father, the ultimate alpha male, you know, CEO of several companies, guy would be like uh, riding a Harley all the way to Baja Mexico. Uh, climb the Alps and so on, always <coughs> top-notch hockey coach of my hockey team and so on. And now he can barely move. He's got Parkinson. He's in a retirement home. 
And when I, I saw him, I was like, you know, that's the most heroic I have ever witnessed him to be. So it puts things back into perspective. And uh, there's, there's stages and season for everything, but that's, that's the season where I'm at. So I'm kind of moved by that, and hopefully I can help a couple more people along the way. Transcendence. Very, very genuinely. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love this. Do you have uh, more questions for Vince? I feel like you. I know. I, I, I have silly questions. It's getting very serious and heavy for me. I'm not ready for I, I retirement discussions. I mean, wherever this goes, I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I, I want to know statistic of kissing. Which, you know, which nationality of women kiss better? Do you have a favorite nationality to kiss? Oh. I'm All sorry, okay. everybody. French kiss. Oh, nice. Yeah. French, yeah. 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 I get it. Cool. Uh, French, cool. Italian. <laughs> South true. American, oh, that's true. Eastern European, okay, okay. American. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. He's just <laughs> listing all of them. <laughs> How about you, Lloyd? What's your, your favorite nationality to kiss? I mean, I think French, honestly. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree with them, actually. Like, f all the French women that I've been with have been, like, very, very good in the bedroom. Um, half of them have been terrible personalities, though, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm extremely it's stuck as a French speaking you know? person, I deserve, I, I have the right to, like, <laughs> to just state it. Hey, sure, you know. Well, you're Swiss, aren't you? Swiss tend to be a bit nicer. The Parisians, in my opinion, they tend to be the oh, worst. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> He's done his, done his research. I've always been looking forward <laughs> to that little debate right there. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but it's true. The, the French women can. Uh, they know what they're doing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Sure, they have experience. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but do not marry them. <laughs> well, what about what about you, Adam? Obviously Russian, I assume. Uh, Russians are obviously number one, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, no, you can say something. I don't know the best, you know. No. I, so for me, it's actually not about nationality. It's about lip size. <laughs> I love making out with people with big lips. So I love her lips because she's got big lips. So for me, it's like the bigger the lips, the more attracted I am. And so I'm like, the, you know, like the women that get the lip filler, and I know it's terrible. Yeah. It's like when it's giant, I'm just like, that's really hot. And, like, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. The, the more they look like a frog or a duck, the more I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yours. Like, you know, like, and even if it's like ridiculously big, everyone's like, look how ridiculous that is. I'm the guy that's like, kind of like it. Like, <laughs> yeah, look how ridiculous that is. Yeah, it's so. Who is she? Yeah, I, <laughs> God. What's her name? Every, What's her number so you can tell her every, on the phone how ridiculous yeah. she looks? Everyone should stay away from her and I'll hang out with her. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I am that guy, basically. And, and I, I think a lot of guys won't admit it. They're like, yeah, that's disgusting. I'm like, no, no, I, I do like it. Because there's a reason women do it and they do it because yeah. guys like it. Whatever else yeah, no, I think people give it hate because they're maybe a little jealous or, I don't know, they just, maybe they, they don't have that and, you know, it's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of that. Going well, on. yeah, I, I think if I go back to when I was 25 years old, I, so I started getting good at dating at 26. So I always think back to 25. At 25, I did not want a woman that had enhancements in any way. I did yeah. not want a woman that worked out. I did not want a woman that was confident. I did not want a woman that was was um, yeah. successful. Really? At 25, yeah, yeah. And the reality is, is because I thought I couldn't keep her. But I could never have admitted that at 25. At 25, if you'd have said to me why, I would have said, oh, because it's fake, they're not real. And genuinely, I think this is what messes up a lot of women. I think a lot of women interact with 90% of the male population who yeah. do not feel confident enough that they could keep a woman who looked like that. And so the women here, I want someone who's natural, I want someone who doesn't do this. But the majority of women who are in, I would say, the top 20, 30% of, of looks of high yeah. quality all do it. And there's no way that they're doing that because it doesn't work. <laughs> they're doing it because it does work, it and does. it's working on the highest level of men who are confident that they can keep that kind of woman. That's true. I had that with a number of sexual partners. I think when I was like, before I learned game and I wasn't good with women, I was like, mo pretty much every woman that I even tried to get with, I kind of knew she had probably more sexual partners than me. I never never knew the exact number. Uh, there's a couple of them I've figured it out. And I feel so self-conscious about it. And I'm talking like, these women had slept with like maybe like 10 people, you know? But even for me, that was like, oh my God, 10 people. Like, you know, I felt Last super insecure. Super insecure. <laughs> <laughs> Before I got here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and so I felt super insecure about it. And now I'm at like, I'm not going to get with a woman who's had more sexual partners. Or if she has, there's no way she'd admit it. Um, but, like, now I'm not. That's not really a thing that I worry about anymore. And so, like, when I hear guys online that are like, if she's not a virgin or if she's had, like, over 
seven bodies, like, she's damaged, she's for the streets, and I'm just like, mm, do you actually date women? Like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> have you been to Los Angeles? I, I, I like <laughs> the comedian as well, too. He said about <laughs> once, like, hey, ladies, what's up with all of us saving yourself for the one? You practice for the ones! Because <laughs> when you meet the one, you better make sure you fuck them good, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. so it's, like it's, so, like, it's, it's so, so true to me. I mean, like, you know, I... My first wife, um, you know, when I when I was married, she was a virgin. Um, you know, so we had the whole, you know, first time having sex together. Like, yeah. I mean, I wasn't a virgin, but she was. Um, you know, when we got married, and I've had people, you know, in the in the dating industry at the time when that happened, be like, "Oh, that's so cool that you met a virgin. Like, that's so great." Um, and the reality is, that was definitely not the best sex of my life. And honestly, like, there's a part of me that. The, um, the fact she hadn't been with anyone was somewhat appealing and definitely was more motivating for marriage. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that's the only reason. It definitely wasn't. And I'm very happy I married her. Mm -hmm. But it was a factor. And I really wish it wouldn't have been. Like, I yeah. actually, I would actually rather it wasn't a factor and that she wasn't a virgin and that she had been with other people. That would have actually made it better because I would have made a much more informed decision mm -hmm. about what I was getting into. Um, and so, you know, genuinely, as somebody, you know, I... I've slept with four virgins. Um, I know okay. exactly who they are. Like, I remember them 100%. And every single time, it was about her, not me. Yeah. It was never for me. It was for her. Was it ever very good for you? It was never good. It was always yeah, terrible. I've, I've never had it been good. And, yeah. and, like, a lot of women don't have their hymen intact. Um, of the four that I slept with, only two of them still had their hymen intact. Okay. Um, because it can get damaged in so many ways. One of them lost it while she was horse riding. Um, like English women horse ride and yeah, that's yeah, a thing, yeah. right? So it can it can get damaged in so many different ways. Um, or at least that's the story she told me. Um, <laughs> being real. Uh, but, you know, the, the one, like, I think my, my favorite time was, was actually not my wife. It was a woman that I was hanging out with and we'd been hanging out for like a, a month as friends. And one day we, we, we go to bed together and um, she's like, hey, I want to tell you something. I'm like, what? And she goes, I'm a virgin. I just want to make sure you know. And I'm like, no. And she said, what do you mean, no? I was like, no, we're not having sex. And she goes, how dare you? Hmm? I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, you don't get to tell me no. It's my virginity. I've chosen you. You're getting rid of it. Imagine if a man <laughs> said that to a woman in that context. How <laughs> fun that would be like, no. <laughs> you're not telling me no. I've chosen you. I'm it's my, to well, you. It's your right body, now. my choice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, she, no, it's not just, just like reversing the roles there a little bit. How, like... Sounds <laughs> okay, basically. She though. didn't give me consent to not have sex with her. Um, and so, like, so I had to. No, but she actually said to me, she was like, look, she was, I know who you are. I know the amount of women you've been with. I hate that this is above my head. I'm 25 years old. I am tired of it being a big deal. I want it gone. And she goes, and I want it gone with someone who knows what they're doing, who can make it special, and who's never going to see me again. She goes, can you just fuck me, get it over with, and let me go meet somebody better than you? And I was like, first of all, ow. Second of all, <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, but I need a minute. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, go shower. I'm going to go out and be back in 20 minutes. And she's like, why? I was like, just, just do it and humor me. If you want me to do this for you, let me do this. And she went, okay. And so she goes to the shower and I left, went to the corner store. In England, there's corner stores everywhere. And I bought flowers. And I came back in with flowers. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, I, well, that was my point. I wanted it to be special, right? So I come in with flowers, and she looks at me, and she goes, what the fuck is that? Throw away the flowers. And I was, no, yeah, I was yeah. thinking that wasn't a move. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I was like, <laughs> I, got, I got these for you. And she's like, why? I was like, just to make sure you know that you're special. I'm going to take your flowers. And she's like, give some back. And, and, no, well, she, she looks at me, and like, I can see her eyes start to go. And I was like, well, go we, where? Where are they going? <laughs> like, no, she starts to cry. Oh, okay. uh, But like not full on crying. It's like a, like a happiness cry, right? And I look at her and I said, and just so you know, it's just tonight, never again. And she goes, just tonight, never again. I'm like, okay. And so I put music on. I lay her down. I get some wine. And there's like flowers and wine and candles and um, oh. there's chocolates. And we do a whole thing. Like we make it a thing. I like go down on her first. I get her worked up. Um, we have sex. It's a bit painful. I guide, and I ask her, I'm like, do you want us to be gentle? Like, and I guide her through it. We have sex. We fuck for hours. Um, I make sure that, you know, she orgasms. She has a great time as best as I can because it's difficult because she's not been through that. Anyway, and the point is, yes. at the end of it, at the very end, it was a very beautiful moment. That was the only one that was like that. <laughs> like, the, the <laughs> others, it was awkward and painful and weird to the point that I was like, no, I'm not going to do this again until yeah. somebody mm. told me I had to. Now, what I about mean, a born-again virgin? Born-again. <laughs> Did you ever encounter some born-agains? I want to be a born-again. 
What does that mean? I want to be a born again virgin. You, you got to take some time off. For that. I, I take my virginity back. A born again virgin. I so you, you, you? He identifies wait, as a wait, virgin. Wait. So, so, so <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that a thing now? Oh, oh yeah. No, it, it, oh. it's been a thing for some time. A so born again <laughs> virgin. <laughs> Oh, so how does right. it work? Can you explain to or me? Or have I been out of the loop? No, 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 you're there's good. No more born, born again virgins. I'm, I'm sure it is. Yeah. If you say it is, it's a no, thing. no. I mean, well, can you, you explain you to me how, how that it's works? It's a woman who had a lot of sex uh -huh. and decides to take it back. Okay. So she's a born again virgin. Yeah, I've, I've done a few of those. So there you are, and now you got a guy. Well, you couldn't wait longer, maybe just after me, or. <laughs> but I, I, I would like to be a born again virgin myself. Every morning, right? I'm, it's what I want to take it all back. Morning. What if I could take morning. it all back and be a born again virgin, and I'd be a virgin right here, right now? Oh no, I don't want that. What? What was? No <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, this is what he's gonna say to women. Like, this is, yeah, this is another it. pickup. I'm telling you, this, <laughs> this is how it works. He's, this is this is the no, best they, thing. They, they would they would be like. A, yeah, they would be like. I'm gonna take that virginity. In, in the early days, there was a guy. Uh, <laughs> A, a group of us, and there was this one girl, very, very strong-minded, and nobody could get to her. And one guy got to her by telling her that suddenly he could not get it up anymore, and she took matters at hand, and she wanted to help him. And that, that's what did it. So I'm going to be a born-again virgin, I think. <laughs> I, have, I, 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 came, I came here to find it. Yeah. This is thanks to you guys. I, I'm glad you're inspired. That's it. Yeah. Glad we could, I glad knew we could help. Th this was more than just a... A trip coming here. This was a, a pilgrimage. I, I really, <laughs> really, really want to challenge everyone watching this, everyone in the dating community. Use just like one of the things you hear Vince say, because I'm not kidding. V Vince, actually, you taught me something many, many years ago. It's a, a dating technique, and I have used it. I still teach it to this day. Um, credit to you. It is one of the best things I've ever heard. Oh, anybody. Yeah, tell us. yeah, and I'll share it. But it, it's so good. And I remember the first time I heard you say it, you didn't even say it to me. You said it to like a group of people. I just listened. And I was like, there's no way that's going to work. We're going to tell us. Uh, come on. And right, then I, right. I did it, and it works so good every time. It's so stupid. You've heard it. It goes like this. You go, <laughs> I just don't understand blowjobs. And you're talking to a woman, and she's like, what do you mean? You know, I just I don't understand them. They're, they confuse me. And the woman's like, I don't. I don't understand. How do they can like you don't like them? No, no, I like them. I just don't understand them. I find the whole process of a blowjob is very confusing. And so the woman's like, okay, well let me help. I'm like, look, what I don't get is why any woman would want to give one. Like why? Wh like it's like soft in your mouth, and then it gets harder and harder, and you can just like imagine it going. And you're describing it to her, and you'll see it in her face. Her eye is like she's imagining doing it while talking to you. And then the best thing happens, they then try and convince you why they like doing it. And this is the most fast. I said that? You said this. That was before I was born again. This. <laughs> I totally take it back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no such word would ever come out of my mouth. But it will come out of yours. No. <laughs> exactly. but it's great because they do. They will then describe to you what they yeah, love yeah, about yeah. doing it and they'll like and you can be even more confused you go like really like 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 i mean <laughs> would you just do it to a stranger you go, oh yeah i've done it to strangers like and they'll tell you <laughs> everything <laughs> and this the success I'm rate is blushing it the success rate is so high now not to a stranger you can't go up to somebody straight but like if you're talking to somebody for like 30 minutes just try it and I'm not kidding, like, try the born again virgin thing. Like, just, <laughs> just try this stuff. Try saying that you don't but make I mean out. It. Whenever I'm serious, people don't <laughs> take me seriously. I want to be a born again. This is not true. <laughs> it's a tough life for Vince Kelvin. I don't it's a tough know life. how long it will take to undo all of that stuff, though, for you, Vince. You know, it's oh, quite a trip. <laughs> now, uh, okay, here's the transcendence. You ready? Here's the transcendence. Yeah, okay? what, what are you transcending no, to? Here's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I have to phase the music. There probably will be a time, until, uh, e unless I depart before that, where I will not be able to have sex anymore. <gasps> and I'm, you don't say. I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> so, no, the first transcendence would be we are just passing, passing through. We're not staying. 
So right there, if I stay with that for a second, what is it that's no longer valid? My excuses, why, why would I have excuses? My concern about what other people may think or not. All of that, all of the high school, elementary, kindergarten, conditioning, boom, pulverized in one shot. Uh, then all stereotypes, the second transcendence. I've, I've witnessed, like, I had a very young bisexual girlfriend. She, she, I think she was 23. Her thing very was young. elder women, messed up women. One night I thought she was joking. She was like, oh, she's got a missing tooth. Oh, my God. And, you know, when, when you witness that once, twice, y you start to realize. So it's not necessarily can one's Barbie or uh, no, you know, there, there's diversity like beyond what we can imagine. So that means that I cannot just nullify myself still buying into all of this. I've been with girls that were so tall, and then the first thing they said, I'm like, oh, you know, you make me feel comfortable because my whole life I've been thinking I was too tall. Really? And uh, the final transcendence is uh, what? I have yet to find it. I will come back in a couple years if I'm still around <laughs> to share the final transcendence. In the meantime, <laughs> I never had ayahuasca, but I felt like I just had one. Yeah, I, I have that effect. I have yeah, that okay, effect. You know. Okay. Any, what, stay away from me. If you're a girl and you're on something out uh, there, don't. I will fry your mind. Like, like, like it, no, it would be a, a big mistake. Just stay away from me. <laughs> if you're on anything, because that, I, that would be. I'm already ever. a lot to process you know, like that. If we add a certain element. <laughs> now, I, I, I want to really find, uh, you know, that place of being truly genuine and uh, all. Uh, ultimately, also, one thing that was misunderstood along, you know who got it? Who? Lisa Ling. Who? Lisa Ling. Uh, of uh, This Is Life. When we're on CNN, Lisa Ling got it. She said, you guys are the ultimate solution. She's a, she's a strong feminist. She got it. She got it because we resolve through, through providing more choices, more awareness, uh, that, like, Ultimately, the, the most skilled PUA guy, whatever they could call themselves, uh, will be the one that will right away detect that woman has a little hang up and, and just go ahead. That's fine. You know? Right. <laughs> I have a different question then. All right. How long does it take you to do your hair every morning? Takes me a lot of time. I cannot do it yeah. by myself. I cannot. Oh. I have professional work on it. I got addicted to it at some point. I would go even twice a day. They would be, Vince, you were here this morning. I know, but right here, can you touch it up? Whoa. No, 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 this is getting too far. I have a tax, to tax accountant that told me <laughs> we only have one problem. You could, yeah, because I pay my taxes. But uh, um, tax accountant said, we're good. There's only one problem. That's gonna look suspicious when you share the amount of money you spend each year on your hair. Try I go, this. but that is the amount. So they, they invited me to reduce the amount because it would it would be a red flag. Like <laughs> but, 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 but how do you drive or take planes, right? You can't like how that's supposed to charge you. know, it seems like hey, the, the, the hair is cool like that. No, no, it's very difficult. Sleep to the side. It's not <laughs> to my back. Doggy style is the predominant way. Uh, even though <laughs> not my favorite, I find it not intimate enough. I'm more <laughs> like of a vanilla type of person, you know. I uh, can tell, yeah. Missionary <laughs> or stuff like Diversion, that. I just yeah. want to cuddle. And uh, what else? The driving. The driving is intense. And the hair like that, you know. So. Well, I have to drive like can't forward? Look to the right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm doing my best to be that James Bond guy, but then I'm in my car and I'm like, like an old lady and my girlfriend's next to me. And I go, <laughs> can you look to the right? Look to the right. <laughs> that's the time when we, we have to have a camera on us right there. You'd be like, that's Vince Calvin. I thought this guy was a badass. <laughs> you drive so slow. It's the hair. It's the hair. <laughs> I love it. Cool, I can relatable, relatable. It's funny, I love what you said about uh, the feminist that gets it. Um, in, I think it was 2011 or 2010, I'm showing my age, um, I was invited on South by Southwest to be on a panel, and it was pickup artist versus feminists. Ooh. And it was uh, three was or four feminists, I forget how many, to be honest with you, and uh, they had me. And the whole idea was we were gonna have this debate. And I messaged the women first and said, would you guys be okay to go to dinner the night before? It's like, totally understand if you don't want to, I'd like to buy dinner. I just would like to meet you first so that when we talk, I can be informed about 
you guys and you can be informed about me and all the women agreed and we went to dinner the night before and so we're sitting down having chinese food uh, all of us the day before and uh they start talking to me about you know their ideas and conception about what i do and i said do you mind if i just tell you what i do and they're like what and i was like men who do not know how to talk to women will typically say the wrong thing they are likely to offend people because they don't know what to say. And when they're getting advice from a guy who is a douchebag, who naturally can meet a bunch of women, they're gonna pick up that douchebag trait. And I was like, tell me if you agree with that or if I'm talking out my ass. They go, no, that makes sense. I'm like, okay, can I tell you my method? And they went, sure. It's like I have a three-step method. Step one, we have a, a, it's a, a, a six-month program. The first two months. Now, back then, we didn't have it like that, but we still had the focus of it at the beginning. You have to make friends with women. You cannot date them. You cannot try and make out with them. You cannot hit on them. Your goal is to be friends. If you cannot make friends with women, you're not ready to learn how to date them. You need to have four women friends who know you, trust you, like you, vouch for you. They will help you with hair. They will help you with fashion. They will give you feedback on whether what you're saying is correct or wrong. Step one. And all the women went, that makes so much sense. I'm like, right, because if you can't be friends with them, you can't date them. Number two, we focus on conversation and confidence. You've got to be able to respond, listen to what somebody says, react to it. I give an example of talking without responding. I was like, it's an interrogation. They go, yep, makes sense. I was like, and the last one is you've got to be able to turn her on. You can't have sex with somebody if they're not turned on. You need to be able to do it. This is our method. And all the women went, this is absolutely great. We agree. The next day, we go to South by Southwest. There's probably a recording if you can find it. If you can find it, please send it to me. I'd love a copy of it because I don't have it. Um, and we go, we go there, and the very first words out of their mouth, they're like, okay, begin. And the woman go, we just want to say, no matter what happens, Adam's great. We need more of him in the world. This guy should be teaching everyone. And I loved it. It was one of the biggest compliments. I literally just sat back, and the feminists got into each other about consent. Because there was one feminist that was pro-BDSM that said, um, no, uh, no doesn't always mean no. And the other feminist says, no, no always means no. And they go, no, that's why we have safe words. And they got into it. They started screaming at each other. And I literally just sat back the whole time saying, I'm going to say nothing on this. I'm going to be so quiet. Aren't feminists so dumb? <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. But that's funny. Uh, but I would never have said that. Uh, but, but what I love about it is exactly what you said. The real dating guys, and I'm talking about like the, the original guys, and I hope you're, you're enjoying this and understand the value that, that Vince brings, is... The whole goal is for the woman to have an amazing experience with you. Whether you end up dating her or not is irrelevant. Whether sex happens or not is irrelevant. A makeout irrelevant. You want her to have the best time with you. And no matter what, you know, we've got, we've got women in the audience. Eve's up here. You don't hang out with Vince and have a bad time. Like, it's funny. It's entertaining. It's enjoyable. And you can't always say that for, like, douchey guys. Right? You, you, sometimes you're like, that guy's an asshole. I don't want to hang out with him. You will... Somebody who's trained really well in dating, you don't have a bad time. It's fun. It's good. It's nice. And from that point, from there, your success rate is so much higher because you actually have an opportunity. You have a chance to make something happen. And I think this has got lost nowadays. I think a lot of guys have lost this idea of, I'm just going to make sure she has a great time because the, the guy she chooses is the one she has the best time with. Yeah, 100%. It's all about the experience. I remember there was a time where um, I, was in, I was in middle school, and the most popular guy was uh, a black guy. He was probably the What was his name? His name was Tom. Oh. Tom. You remember, sir, huh? Flynn. <laughs> no, his name was Tom Brittle. Uh, actually, I don't know. Zero Did you say Tom Riddle? Tom Brittle. Okay, I was no, like, no, no, just, no, it was not You're Voldemort. just naming things from Harry Potter. <laughs> like, at this point. No, 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 Brit Brittle. Brittle. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, so he was overweight and probably one of four black guys in the, in the school. And every oh, counted. <laughs> what does matter? Estimating. <laughs> Estimating. Um, so uh, this guy was like, if I, I talked to most women, and all of them said that they would hook. He would be the only guy that they would hook up with, and he was literally the nicest guy you could meet. Every time he barely knew me, and I thought he didn't remember my name. He's like, "Hey Lloyd, how's it going?" He would always ask me how I'm doing. There was one time where I forgot my. You had to bring a. a videotape to record your presentation and I forgot mine. I'm in tears and I'm looking for mine and he goes, hey dude, just like get my tape out and like you can use it and like I was like, this guy, we're not even friends and he just offered Aww, to give me his tape so sweet. and I could not believe like how much of a generous and giving person he was to everybody 
to everybody. And uh, that was the first time I learned exactly what you just said, which is that it's not about like, you know, picking up or game or winning. It's really about making people feel good around you. Yeah. It, it really is. Like, um, I remember the first time I slept with somebody who was older than me. Um, like, you know, I was in my, my early 20s just getting into dating. She was 38. Yeah. So it was like a, you know, twi- uh, 10, 15 year difference, give or take. Um, less than 12, I don't know. 26, 38, whatever the math is on that. 12. 12, 12 yes. There we go. 12 is different. Thanks. Well, I, was in, I was in story mode, not in math mode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 12 year difference, um, which to me was huge. Like, I'd never dated anyone over 31. And um, it was a woman I'd known for years. And she knew me before I got good at dating. She's been friends for years. Her boyfriend broke up with her. And she was like, hey, I'm in town. My boyfriend just broke up with me. Um, the trains are already finished. Like in England, the trains stop after a certain time. She's like, can I crash at your place? I just have nowhere to go. I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so she comes to my place and uh, I'm watching a movie. So she walks in. I'm like, hey, I'm watching a movie. I can turn it off. We can talk. She goes, no, I don't want to interrupt your movie. Like, I'm good. And so we just sit watching a movie. And she's like, do you mind if I ask you something? I'm like, sure. And she's like, I just don't know the best way to get over a breakup. And I know you're doing dating stuff now. What, what is it? And I was like, well, well I kind of don't want to answer. because so it's happy a, you asked me. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I was like, it's kind of a bit awkward. And she goes, what do you mean? I was like, well, what you should do, uh, call, officially, I was like, I'm not saying you should. I was like, but officially, you should instantly or as fast as possible meet somebody else and just have a casual hookup. Like someone you trust, someone that you feel comfortable with, that you know it can just be casual sex and go no further. And she goes, okay, that makes so much sense. I just have to find the right guy. I was like, exactly, just find the right guy. Um, I'm like, I'm sure you've got plenty. Any minute, yeah, anywhere, sure you've got wrong. plenty of people. <laughs> you know, if you walk just outside, spin in a circle. Yeah, yeah, just just look around and you know, somebody. just just see what you can see. Um, <laughs> and anyway, and so um, so she's like, okay, that's great. And I was like, um, and she goes, you know what? My back really hurts. I'm like really stressed about this. I was like, do you want a massage? Is that weird? And she goes, that's not weird. And so I start giving her a massage. Um, and then she turns around, and starts making out with me, and we instantly have sex. Um, as soon as we have sex, I'm like, I, uh, I don't know how to say this, but um, you know, when I was suggesting somebody, I didn't mean me. And she's like, yeah, you did. And I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> and the, 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 but the point is, it's from friendship. And I think a lot of guys are so terrified of getting stuck in that friend zone because they think that nothing's going to happen, but they don't realize the guys that say they're in the friend zone, they're not in the friend zone. They're in the... I'm trying to pretend to be nice to guilt her into having sex zone. Yes, <laughs> yes. Tough zone to be. That's yeah. not the zone that should be in there. Yeah, that's not the friend zone. When a woman's like, oh, I just think of you as a friend. That's, you're really creepy and I don't want to upset you in case you turn toxic. That's, it's yeah. not the same thing. When a woman actually thinks of you as a friend, they say stuff like, hey, I just had a really bad date, but I was hoping I'd get laid. Could you fuck me? That's what friends say, and they are situations I have actually been in. Women don't come to me and be like, you know, you're really creepy. I don't want anything to do with you. Um, well, or they don't say, I think of you as just a friend. We could never have sex. Like um, the last friend of mine that I had sex with, she literally said to me, I know one day we're going to have sex. It's just about when. And then we had sex that night. Like that, that's what actual friendship is. Mm. Yeah. And uh, guys get that wrong because a woman understandably uses I see you as a friend as a nice way to let you down. You're not in the friend zone. You're being let down nicely. Make no mistake. That's what supporting is. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think that, like, when I was younger, I had female friends. I thought it was a waste of time. So I went through a period where it was like, oh, no female friends. Never do that. And then as I, you know, learned this stuff, then I started having female friends. And the same female friends that I had before that I stopped talking to for a little bit, like, we came back and we kind of had a similar relationship. But I just felt like it was different, you know? Like, I felt like we could date if, you know, I wanted to. But most of the time I didn't because we had a good thing going or why, mm. why ruin that you know so it was very interesting i think one of the big hang-ups in in love overall in a long-term relationship in you know because comes a point where you realize it's it's not really about game that was a cute thing the idea of game but as humans we will be in relationships with ourselves for our entire lives and other people if we perceive the other person as greater, that's the beginning of the end of attraction. Yeah. For me, it's really like an overflow. It's, imba- it's a imbalance. plus to be with someone, but I don't depend on someone. Because that's the uh, that would give birth to codependency, to any of the hang up, any of the stuff that we we all try to avoid, we fear and, and so on. And the the more genuine way would be to, to be in such a rich relationship with yourself that others become a plus. 
And I mean, just being here, you know, one thing that I've always, and, and uh, we're talking about like brand or being nice. So uh, there's like giving a compliment, hoping to get something, but that's not really a genuine compliment or an observation. But around you, I've always said that from 2007, yep. first time you showed up from the UK in Hollywood at the Cine Grill, the moment you present, life becomes richer because you're having a rich experience. And then if you pair two like that, then that's like a, that, like a volcano, a vortex, right? Dude, yeah. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's true. I mean, it's like, so that's the challenge. And you, for years, there's been so many attempts to define attraction. Attraction is value-based. Attraction is this. Attra I think that it's, it's a natural thing in nature, like the elements, the greater won't attract uh, the lesser won't attract the greater. So if I think that I'm lesser than somebody, that's the beginning of the end. Uh, and nobody is lesser or greater, but it's like if I'm having a lesser rich time by myself and I hope that somebody is going to fulfill me, that's the end. Dude, it, it, I, I agree with you, and I've seen this countless times as well. When somebody says, this is the kind of woman I'm attracted to, that is always the kind of woman they struggle with the most. Mm. The minute, yeah. like, and it doesn't matter what they are. Like, I'll, I'll see a guy who's like a good looking dude and he goes, I can't get blondes. And then there's another guy that's like, I can't get brunettes. And there's another guy that's like, I can't get people in my town. I can get them in any other town. I can't get them in my town. Whatever you tell me you want is the thing you probably can't get. Yeah. Because you've instantly shifted the value. You're like, I want that. What are you saying? You're saying that has value and I want it. What are you saying? It has value. Therefore, I have less value because I believe I need that in order to complete my yep. value, right? Very mm -hmm. subtle linguistic shift right, right it's, there. It's it's and, and mental, right? You think about yep. it. Whereas like for me, I don't think I want a specific type of person or a specific type of thing. I enjoy spending time with women. The end. Having sex, making out, all these things are super fun, but it is a side effect to spending time with women. I always say like, the average guy has sex for 15 minutes. That's it. Like, and for me, it's like two and a half minutes if we go twice. And so, you know, I've got to occupy 23 hours <laughs> and 57 and a half minutes of the day. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I actually enjoy spending time with women so that when I do only perform for two and a half minutes, like, you know, they don't get too upset about it. And you're going to spend more time interacting with them than you are having sex with them. When the only thing in your head is, can I have sex with her? Can I make out with her? Can I do this? You're guaranteed to fail. Because the woman's thinking, after you've disappointed me for 15 minutes, <laughs> what else am I going to get out of this, right? Like, yeah, and, and any guy that's like, no, I'm the best she's ever had in sex. And that's just what she tells you. Um, she just wants you to feel better because she enjoys the other stuff with you, right? So as a guy, your job is really <laughs> stop putting a woman on a pedestal. Stop saying, this is who I want. Stop going after anything specific and just really enjoy time with women. And the amount of guys I meet that struggle with women who say, well, I don't like hanging out with them. I'm like, and that's the problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That right there. I also notice a lot of the guys that I help initially, they're beautiful beings. They're usually brilliant in, in other fields, but they're not a very good company. <laughs> you know, I, I do those boot camps. We walk around you and say. there's no women around. It's just like... <coughs> I know nothing about you. You're not really good. So become good company. It becomes mm -hmm. good company to, to, to yourself. Because ultimately, it's a, I understand me well. I'm a family person. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm inclined towards family. Uh, I love company. I love being social. The truth here, as much as I so deeply love uh, my girlfriend's own, uh, I, the highest enjoyment is when I'm by myself. I've never met someone that didn't slow me down in one way or another. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, right? And, and, and that's not, that could be taking the wrong way, but that is because then if I'm with you, I'm with you because I want to be with you. Yeah. I'm not with you because I need to be with you. I'm yeah. not with you because I fear not being with you. So, so that, that's big right there. You know, and you're, you're the embodiment of that, 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 that richness. Like I arrived here and everything. It's just like, wow, you're a builder. This is amazing. I love that. I'm yeah, excited. I mean, I, I agree with you. You know, like it, for me, like the important factor is with, with people have choices, but they choose to be with their partner, basically, right? Not because they have to, because like, oh, we have kids together, I have to stay together, or like, oh, because of the finance or some other stuff, or because like I will be, no one will want me. Like that's staying out of scarcity, right? It will only amplify 
problems, basically, you know? So yeah. you got to make sure you so giving and so open that and, and so accepting of people, right? They just want to be with you. They can choose not to be. Yeah, I, I, I think you, you guys both nailed it, like, on the head. And I, I think when it comes to attraction, what you said about company is so true. Being around somebody takes energy. And I don't mean it drains you. Yeah. I mean, being entertaining, being someone fun to talk to takes mental energy. Yeah. And the amount of times I meet guys, uh, like dating students, who are like, well, I don't want to do it. I don't like doing that. I'm like, you think I do? Like, you really think I like doing this? Like, given a choice between hanging out with my kids at home and playing a video game or hanging out with you in a bar, listening to you complain, like, given a choice, which of these two things? And then he's like, well, you know, but you're getting paid to do that. I was like, everyone can get paid to do a job that they don't love. This is taking mental energy. And once upon a time when this wasn't my job and I had to go out to a bar to try and meet people, it's not like I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I can't wait to drain my energy. I, it's not like I was like, I wouldn't rather be sitting at home playing video games because I would have. I'd have loved to have just sit indoors and played video games. But the person I would have been if I just sat indoors and played video games is not the same as the person that I became by forcing myself to go out and have interactions with new people and be in good company. When I go to a bar, it's not like I can meet a woman and be like, hey, I need you to be good company because I even bothered to show up today, right? Like, I can't yeah. do that. I've got to be not just good company, the best company there. Uh, the nightclub we used to go to had a capacity of 2,000 people. Well, we know that there was like 1,200 women because they had a strong ratio of guys to girls. That means there's 800 men. So I had to be better company than 799 men, or at least better than 750 of them if I wanted to get into that like top 10%. Yeah, yeah. And I was. like Given a choice between hanging out with me or hanging out with 750 other men in the room, most women would have chosen me. And it's because I brought an, a, an air of effort and fun that nobody else did. And, and I, I'm going to blow you guys away. My favorite line to bring people like back to mine was, what are you doing tomorrow lunchtime? Mm -hmm. And one would be like, I don't know, like, you know, getting lunch. I'm like, when was the last time you had a picnic? And they'd be like, what? <laughs> I was like, when did you last have a picnic? I'm like, what are you on about? I was like, like a picnic. Like, we'll get a towel. We'll make some sandwiches. I'll have a cucumber sandwich. I'll cut the crust, crust off for you. Like, I, I believe in that. You know, and she's like, are you really, like, we're in a nightclub, like the number one nightclub in London, like, fucking Pharrell is over there. You're inviting me for cucumber sandwiches and a picnic? I was like, I'm English. This is, this is what we do. And the woman would be like, well, it's been a long time. And I was like, okay, don't think I'm weird, but do you want to have a picnic with me tomorrow? And this woman was like, uh, yeah, fine, I'll have a picnic with you tomorrow. And I'm like, great. But then you're going to hang out the whole night because you've got a plan. You're going to have a picnic tomorrow. We spent the whole night together. Ah. Projection, that's yeah. another opportunity not just to projection but also to trigger investment from women right to continue contribute with ideas and recipes and times right because we're, we're just like me and some staff members talking about as well too basically right guys tend to not uh, we talk about it a lot in our attraction basically right attraction is investment from both parties basically you love what you put effort and time to and all of guys just with again would put effort and be like, well, she didn't like me. And I'm like, well, yeah, because she didn't ask me to do all of these things for her. You know what I mean? Like, give her opportunity to, do, to contribute, like, at least mentally or, or with efforts on your investment. So it's a great opportunity for you guys. Nice, yeah, and it was killer. And then I would follow it up with, towards the end of the night, I'm like, do you want to get breakfast tomorrow? And she's like, aren't we doing a picnic? I'm like, yeah, but we could do breakfast too. I know this really cool breakfast spot. And I would sell them on the breakfast spot. And she'd be like, all right, that sounds great. I was like, cool, so we're doing breakfast and lunch tomorrow. And she goes, yeah. And I was like, do you have a ride home? And she'd be <laughs> like, no, I was just going to get a cab. And I'm like, well, do you want to just crash at mine, seeing as how we're having breakfast anyway? And she'd be like, sure, why not? But I'm like, not no having problem. sex. Well, I, I would say I'm a virgin. It's all right. It's, like the, the newborn, but I'm a virgin. It's funny. I would, I would literally say it. I'd be like, look, I've got a really nice bed, but I'm not going to presume we're going to sleep on the same bed. I'll sleep on the sofa. And so we'd go home. And I would make a point of going into the bedroom and setting her up. And then I would grab a pillow and I'd start walking towards the door. And I'd put the pillow on the sofa. And she'd be like, do you not have a blanket? I was like, I only have one blanket. I'd imagine it's like our toddler, how he does. Like, <sighs> yep, that's exactly it. Like with my one pillow. She goes, you're going to sleep on the sofa with a pillow. I was like, yeah, I don't mind. Like, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. She goes, well, now I feel uncomfortable kicking you out of your own bed. I said, like, you didn't kick me out. I volunteered. I don't mind. This is yeah. just, I'm telling you, the breakfast is worth it. And she goes, don't be stupid. Sleep in the same bed. 
And I'm like, okay, but, and then like you, I'd be like, but don't touch me. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, no funny business. It's like, I don't sleep with women on the first night. That would be weird, especially as we haven't had breakfast yet. I don't want to do that. I was like, my rule is simple. We both have to keep one foot on the floor at all times. It's like, so place your foot on the floor. And I'd make her put a foot on the floor. And she goes, this is really uncomfortable. I was like, yeah, but it's the only way we can't have sex. I'm going to do the same. She goes, there are other ways not to have sex. I was like, well, none that I feel comfortable trusting you with. Miss, I can't keep my foot on the floor. <laughs> right? And then she's like, oh my God, you are being ridiculous. She goes, why don't we just have sex? All right, fine. Let's do that then. If you insist. If only because you want to. <laughs> but that's, that's the stuff. Like, because I was the most interesting guy she met that night. Because I was the only one that invited her on a picnic. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, you yeah. know. Something to do, you know? Leading somewhere. Yeah. That's, that's like a, 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 you know, beautiful dancing. Yeah. It's like a dance. You know, it's not like no one wants to ever hook up. But it's got to be yeah, like entertaining. I, I would always ask a woman, like, when did you know we're going to have sex? And they would always say, when we were naked in bed and I took off my panties. They never knew until that point, like ever. And I know there were guys out there like, that's not true. Like every woman's told me when she first met me. Like, good for you, dude. Then, then you're that good looking, awesome guy that women just decide for you. But you know what? I had to learn game. Well, women say that women say that oh i knew within the first like millisecond of meeting him yeah you know, they, they, they they always say that they do but what i'm saying is they don't say that to me and this is how i know i have to have game they've yeah. never i've never well, had I, a woman i, I, I don't, like, I don't, I don't I believe you when they it. say it yeah i don't yeah. no i, don't, I, I personally don't yeah i i have i sit down it, for me it's a career 18 years of teaching dating i have always asked everyone when did you know they said the same thing when we were in bed and Very i took off my question. panties <laughs> yeah and i've done it with every single woman so i so i know the point big survey i'm going Yes. <laughs> okay. Over a thousand people at this point. Like, and I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll keep doing it because I want to know when they know. And it's always the same. And it's, it's a reminder to me that I have to use game. I have to still make sure that I'm full consent, doing it slowly, making it fun, making them enjoy it. And that's the key. Yeah. Um, we are getting close to the end. We've got like seven minutes left, give or take. But I want to do a quick fire round. Okay. Um, oh, so, questions. and I think Eve. Oh, oh do, you have, do we have questions? So yeah. What is, well, okay, I love that question. So we're going to ask it because I kind of want Eve, Lloyd, me, I want us to ask some questions to Vince to, you know, get his answers to some basic dating questions. Okay. So I'll, I'll, we'll start with the, the um, audience one. I'm game. I'm game. I think I can sustain seven more minutes of my daily bladder training, but beyond that, I will have to <laughs> rush to the back to use the bathroom. The saddest thing that could ever happen. You're in a nightclub, you walking out with her and you got to use the bathroom. So uh, just like seals will train themselves in a variety of ways. For decades, I have trained my bladder to endure, but this is the threshold. So a couple of questions. If I appear to be slightly <laughs> distracted, will know what so the cause of that is. Vince naturally spits out speed seduction in NLP. For anyone that didn't, that everyone that missed it, he spoke about the desire to go to the restroom and he says, imagine this, you're in a nightclub. If you listen back and he'll say that. This is so natural to Vince. Um, so, so key component, what is speed seduction, Vince? Well, I have uh, nothing to do with it. I, was, uh, I, I gotta go fast, but um, the... I was at a Tony Robbins event where I was a crew member and I received a leadership award from Tony Robbins for my participation. Only challenge in that organization is that I was constantly with the, seen with different women and some guy came to me and said, what are you doing? Are you doing speed wah wah wah? And I said, speed what? And it turned out that they gave me a business card. I called the person. They found me a little annoying because I was running patterns on them on the phone. And then I brought them a girl <laughs> I, I, as an offering. And then after that, uh, I, I, the element of speed seduction, you know, you got to do what works. And I think it, it's a matter of being a good strategist, understanding. Uh, what, uh, be beyond just like the old story, like, oh, if you leave a garden unattended, it's going to be a mess. Yep. So, I, so, so it's a form of gardening. Uh, it, it, do I do some elements of hypnotic seduction? Absolutely, because it would be an offense to whatever person I'm with if I withheld with my communication. I'm not going to crawl on the floor because I know how to walk. Speed seduction, in summary, everything he said, the element of NLP and hypnosis applied to seduction. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Eve, your question. My question. Um, what's the best way to meet high quality women? To be a high quality man? To, um, and, uh, okay. 
Here's the third transcendence. It came back. Oh, the I'm so glad. The I'm the biggest. withholding help. It created a weird effect like I am on ayahuasca or whatever. Not my question. That it helps. No, no. Okay, check this out. So uh, I'm going to meet a human, and that human will have pluses and minuses. I will remain a human with pluses and minuses. I can be in the world and do my thing in the world, uh, but I cannot be of the world. Uh, and the more I come to peace with that, I will have wonderful, uh, I'm a genius, I'm a complete imbecile as well, simultaneously. I'm, I'm like the sweetest thing you ever met. I am dangerously deadly. So uh, a woman will be the same thing. And if two get together, they, they cannot fantasize that the other person will complete them. No one will complete us. Uh, they cannot also freak out every time there's a little bit of a difference. I think a great relationship would be some days I really want to be with her, some days I don't want to be with her. But despite of that, I evolve and I use that as fertilizer. That's that. So I would never look at a woman and go, this is a quality woman. I would be a little suspicious. I learned that from women. They're great. Women, you cannot tell them anything. They go, why are you wearing this? What do you do? What do they do? And finally, they make the crucial mistake. You know, you're at the gym on the treadmill. And every time there's two chicks next to each other, sorry for saying chicks, uh, they, w what do they say to each other? Oh, I met this guy, really? And either one, 99% of the time, she will be the, the friend. We, oh, really? How is he? I don't know. That's their answer. I don't know. And 1% of the time they go, oh, he's different. He is no different. So quality woman would be uh, a person that applies themselves. I, I, I know that I'm meeting a quality person if they're willing to work it, if they're willing to also admit I'm at fault. That's one of the finest human quality, most rare, like I'm at fault. So anyway, love that. Oh, so profound. Wow, I mean, that's <laughs> it. When you, when you read 55, I cannot stay too much longer on this planet because Lord knows what enlightened thing I may utter that may well, totally revolutionize I the whole thing. I hope you get thing. enlightened. Oh, yeah. Lloyd, your question. Yeah. What's, the, what's the best opening line when you're approaching somebody? Um, I, I don't believe in lines, but the best thing you could do is be with what's there and not see that as a problem. Okay. It's a great opening line. Uh, like, for example, um, I would talk to you, but I really have to use the bathroom. What do I do? Can you wait here for a second? <laughs> and if that's the case, you know, the sad thing is that a lot of the things that I naturally uttered, they then became a line and they mm -hmm. lose their potency once yeah, they become I line. Agree. Yeah. Like when I met my uh, second wife, uh, she was sitting by herself and there was plenty of space around her. And it just dawned on me, why is this person by herself? And I say, I don't know what you're doing to keep people away. It's not working with me. And then I asked her if I could <laughs> sit, and I nearly sat on her. And then people wrote it down. The speed seduction students said, well, oh, all right, I don't know what uh, you're doing to keep people away, but it's not working on me. And it wasn't working for them. It was genuine. Yeah? Yeah. Genuine. I mean, I've done all sorts of, uh, I've even started going like, sorry. I'm sorry. I, anyway. I want to talk to you that this is a disaster. We're not going to start it over again. And, you know, you don't want to be with people that don't want to be with you. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. best recommendation, especially in this day and age, if a person doesn't just open up to you right away, the test is not, is my opener good? How open are they? And if they don't right away open, I just, I just let them be. Let them be. You know, anyone that does less than... Oh, wow, I love your hair. Wow, where, 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 where are you from? If it's less than that, I will just go, ahead. anyway, you have a good night. Okay? Choice. Cock power. <laughs> oh, I ruined it all. That was so brilliant. No, That's my I Tourette. That. <laughs> right? We were talking yeah, about Tourette <laughs> before. <laughs> I have Tourette. <laughs> Or, or I, I can be One to <laughs> One to, Oh, no. <laughs> I have a Tourette. Oh, wow. Um, guys. Well, I'm getting enlightened. Listen, more. Listen, I no, hope. I want to grow up and be like you guys. I really admire what you got going on. Yeah. Really, it's beautiful. Thanks. Man. Beautiful. And what an entrepreneur. Like, you just like. You know, that's the, my, most of the guys that I coach, they, they go like, oh, and what about, you know, uh, 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 business? Uh, uh, I want to be more. It, 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 
they yeah. want to be li like you. You, you, you. I really admire what you, what you build in a very, very genuine way. So for me, I was a little bit like the, the crazy cousin that visits <laughs> once in a while that <laughs> had some good thing, but props to you. So Thank you, Vince. I appreciate it. For everybody at home, I 100% recommend you go and check out Vince Kelvin. Um, just a phenomenal character, a very old friend and a good friend of mine, um, Vince such a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Um, you should also go and check out the single guy. What are we talking about today? Lloyd, for you, if they want to go and find out about you. Uh, yeah, just a dot single that guy. You can search my Instagram, check out any of the videos, or my YouTube, the single guy. Works. Cool. Um, I am the E Lions on Instagram. Perfect. And I am at the Adam Lions. If you want my personal profile, go check it out. Um, if not, you can always follow us on Instagram at Ask the Dating Coach Live. Thank you ever so much for tuning in and watching this. Vince Kelvin, as always, a pleasure. We'll see you next time on Ask the Dating Coach. Woo